Fabric 2.x has introduced many enhancements. Focus in this lecture is only on the enhancements related to the chain code. I suggest that you go through other changes and enhancements in Fabric 2.x by visiting the Fabric website and looking for what's new in Hyperledger Fabric 2.0. Although I'm covering all the chain code related updates, I would encourage you to read through these changes in this documentation as well. Fabric 2.x support the externalization of the chain code build and chain code launch. Let me explain what that means. Chain code build process in 1.x used to be carried out by the peer by launching a build container. Now that process still works in 2.x, but in addition to the container-based build mechanism, Peer also support an external build interface. So what that means is that you can put together your build process in an independent component and then configure the peer to use that independent component to build the chain code. From the launch perspective, the chain code can be launched as a surface in any kind of container. For example, you can host your chain code as a process. You can host your chain code in a Kubernetes pod. So it really doesn't matter how you are hosting your chain code, as long as the interface is exposed by the chain code can be configured in the peer, it will be invocable from the peer. Bottom line is that you can use any technology to build the chain code now because the build process and the hosting process or the launching process is externalized. Fabric 1.x always launched the chain code in Docker containers. Whereas in the case of Fabric 2.x, due to the support for external launchers, the chain code doesn't necessarily have to be launched in Docker containers. The default mechanism available in Fabric 2.x still launches the chain code in Docker containers. In Fabric 1.x, the chain code code was shared by the members on the channel. In Fabric 2.x, that is not a requirement. So the code does not have to match across the organizations. Let me explain it with an example. Let's say there are four members on a channel and A, B, and C have decided to share the chain code code. In that case, developer from one of these organizations can implement the chain code and then put it in some kind of a shared repository. And these three members can then pick up the code from the shared repository and deploy it in their peers. Now let's say organization D has certain specific requirements which are not met by the chain code developed by the developer from organization A. In that case, the developer from organization D can implement the chain code to meet the specific requirements for organization D. Now the obvious question you may ask at this point is, why would organization need to do that? As I mentioned earlier, there may be specific needs. For example, organization D may have a need for certain query functions which are required for some kind of business processing in organization D. Another example is where organization D has specific needs from the transaction processing perspective. The behavior of the chain code should be consistent across the network. And what that means is that irrespective of how the chain code is developed or who is developing the chain code, it must have the same specifications. The input output must match for the transactions. And the other thing is that the read write sets generated by way of the execution of the chain code within the endorsing peers must match for the endorsement to be successful. Fabric 2.x has introduced decentralized chain code governance. This is a big change in terms of how the chain code is installed and instantiated in the network. Chain code definition consists of two parts. The first part is the chain code implementation of the specifications, and the second part is a set of parameters. Members of the channel now have the ability to vote on whether they agree with the chain code definition or not. And depending on the rules, the chain code may become deployable to the network or not. And like in any other democratic process, there are rules that need to be established by the member organizations. For example, how many members should agree for the chain code to become deployable? Or if some members have votes that may have higher weightages. All these rules are encoded in policies 
which become part of the channel definition and at runtime these rules are applied when a request comes for the deployment of the chain code to support the decentralized chain code governance model fabric 2.x has introduced a new system chain code the name of the system chain code is underscore life cycle in order to take advantage of this system chain code you must set up the fabric channels with fabric 2.0 if you have worked on fabric 1.x then i'm sure you have heard about the system chain code lscc which stands for life cycle system chain code it is still supported for channels built for fabric 1.x even if you have a peer which is version 2.0 but my recommendation will be to go with the channels with fabric version 2.0 so that you can take advantage of the new life cycle system chain code to manage the life cycle of the chain code on fabric version 2.0 channel you need to use the life cycle command which has this format peer life cycle chain code and the flag at this time the life cycle command supports only the chain code sub command if you have a channel that is still on version 1.x then you may continue to use the peer chain code command which is available in fabric 1.x as well as in the peer binary for 2.x please keep in mind that peer lifecycle chain code command does not have the query and invoke functions so you will continue to use the peer chain code command for querying and invoking the chain code irrespective of whether it's defined on fabric 1.x channel or fabric 2.x channel parameter changes in fabric 2.x does not require the reinstallation of the code for the chain code for example if you are adding a new member to the private data collection definition or if you are changing the endorsement policy you can simply deploy the updated parameters instead of uh, deploying the code for the chain code which has not changed now this is very different from how fabric 1.x used to work in fabric 1.x irrespective of whether the code had changed or not any change in the parameters would require the reinstallation of the chain code code so this is a welcome change which will eliminate unnecessarily updating the code if there is no need the chain code package format in fabric 2.x is now the standard tar file format so that means you can use the tar utility to inspect the content of the chain code package and if you do so you will find that there are two parts to it there is a code.tar.gz that contains the code for the chain code and there is metadata.json that has the metadata about the chain code including the configuration that has been provided for the parameters chain code definition updates in version 1.x the chain code updates were tracked by its name and a version which was controlled by the administrators in fabric 2.x the chain code is tracked with a name and a sequence number and the sequence number is incremented every time the chain code definition is updated please note that version is still there in fabric 2.x as one of the parameters but it is managed outside of the fabric runtime in other words fabric runtime does not enforce any rule on the version parameter in fabric 2.x the organization administrators have to approve specific packages for installation on the peers across the organization if any peer has the older package or does not have the approved package on it then the peer won't be able to process the request it received let me explain it with an illustration let's say acme organization has three peers and all of the three peers at some point are consistent in terms of the chain code package installed on it let's say the organization admin decided to approve a new package in this scenario the peer number 1 and peer number 2 will continue to work but peer number 3 has an older version of the package as a result it will not be able to process the request so far i have discussed the chain code enhancements introduced in fabric 2.x which is all good now some bad news the peer dev mode is broken in fabric 2.1.0 as of april 2020 and you can read more about this issue at this link in fact i'll encourage you 
to go to this website, read about this issue, and add your comments at the bottom. Also, don't forget to vote this issue up so that we can get the developer's attention and get this resolved. Time to summarize. In this lecture, I covered the chain code related enhancements in Fabric 2.x. At this time, the course is updated to Fabric 2.x and it does not make any assumption in terms of your prior experience in Fabric 1.x. So what that means is that if you're new to Fabric, it really does not matter because as you will be learning all of the concepts from scratch in Fabric 2.x. 